Howdy folks, it's Handsome, and today, I got a special guest with me today, John Jacobs! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> so, uh, John works with me, he skates with me, he shoots with me, he tinkers with me. Alright, so, we're talking about shutters today. We got shutter talk. We're talking shutters. Sony shutters. Why are they going kapooey? Shutter motors. Shutter motors. How, how many shutters do you think I do a week, John? Mm, I would say probably a majority of what you do are A7 IV shutters. Yeah. John took apart a shutter one day, and this is how all of this transpired. I'm going to let John take this one away. So basically what we noticed is a lot of these shutters were failing in the exact same place and exhibiting the same um, problems and the same uh, issues where the little gear right here basically is either in the wrong position, stuck, or just bound all together uh, where it's frozen. And that doesn't allow this mechanism which controls your shutter to operate and move. The motor seems to spin, all the sprockets are just jammed up. So basically, I grabbed a screwdriver, screwdriver, you can get these at Handsome Repair Store. Yeah, <laughs> you already know. You got it. So I started pulling some screws apart. Let's find one that's jammed up, that's totally jammed. So here's one that's busted. And one thing that we noticed is the sprocket, if we look at one that is in semi good condition, will have a gap right here on the housing. Well, when we look at this one, there ain't no gap, y'all. Oh, you can see, yeah. Totally fused tight, just not moving, totally jammed. So basically what this is going to exhibit is a stuck shutter. So me being the tinkerer that I am, started taking these things apart. After pulling apart two or three of them, I realized that the issue is basically that the plastic or carbon composite, whatever you want to call it, uh, was basically cracked and it was the part that holds the gear in place. Is that what, then that's what this is, right? Right, that's a little bit of the plastic that's the, basically the little centering pin that basically is a, just a little piece of plastic that comes through a little hole right there to help hold that gear. But what we were noticing is basically when you take all these screws out, what you're going to observe is, if we flip that over, ta-da, a mess. Now, nah, makes more sense. That's the little arm that goes up and down. But oh, yeah. here's the sprocket. And if we look at the sprocket, it actually has part of the support shaft. Oh, wow. Broken into two pieces. So Is that what the screw goes into? Well, yeah, well, no screw that goes into it, but that supports this sprocket. Okay. Now, if we look at the sprocket, we can even see damaged teeth where there's flat spots where it's been rubbing oh, real wow. hard on there. The other part is now the motor housing. You can see clearly where it's broken off. That piece. Yeah, so this piece basically <clears throat> was on there supporting it. Now, to me, it looks like Sony could either A, make this out of a totally different material, or like you just mentioned earlier, put a screw in it. Right. Put something in there to hold that in place. So uh, throughout the constant vibration or clicking, um, and if the clicking is what's causing the, the crack or break or someone drops the camera and then more clicking and then it breaks off, that screw would hold everything in place. After taking apart three or four of these, we noticed that it wasn't just this little piece of plastic like we thought was just breaking off. Right. It was the entire support oh, wow. that was cracking off. So any of these models that have a sprocket that looks like it's bent or not sitting square, it'll be in there at an angle. It'll be missing this piece or it'll be pushed up totally against there. We can guarantee that what's going on is that broken sprocket support. So fast forward. How long would you say? Maybe a couple years since this has been going on? Yeah. Probably at least two years. Sony finally did replace or upgrade something on here. Enter part number 
A218947E. And the crazy thing is is you when you put it in it'll add, it'll show an original part number and you'll no longer be able to to order it. And we are going to take this bad boy apart. We're gonna dissect it carefully so we don't make a mess all over the place. I feel like I can already see the difference in this material, or is that just a different finish? Mm, that looks like it could be, well, this is definitely duller. So right. it could be a denser material. So maybe that's what it's gonna require, something that can handle the, the vibration weight or whatever. Because if we look at all the ones that failed, they all have the same hard, right. shiny plastic in common where this is definitely duller if we look at where the sprockets are positioned the main drive is in the same place if we look at position of the sprocket that actually is connected to the shutter mechanism oh we got a gray sprocket there the new one's black. black oh wow so now possibly they've upgraded the entire assembly to a denser material yeah way different sprocket guys way different color we got black, we got gray. So the black I'm assuming is definitely more durable. Hopefully. Hopefully. Same number of screws. Ah, I see one thing different though. Look, they glued it. Yeah, they put some glue they on the screw. They got a little dab of glue. But I glue. mean, is that really gonna do anything? Um, yeah, and they don't have they don't have glue on that one. Well, but that one has. Yeah, no glue no on this glue. one. Okay, so no glue. No glue. No glue. So. Oh, this one had glue. Yeah, it did have glue. So this but one must have been the, a newer. What was the part number? Oh, that's just some. That's yeah, J two, six KK. Well, the, that's just a. Uh, oh, the stamp, serial number. Got gotcha. uh, from the in the factory. All right, so it could be when they put a little glue on there, it's to keep that from backing out with vibration. You know, with the yeah, with the ibis, moving back and forth. Yeah, but it's the. It's this shaft is what's going to have to be updated. Right. And it looks like the shaft does go all the way through, like normal. Yeah, and you can see they they checked these points within production. Like we didn't, you saw us pull this out. Mm -hmm. We didn't circle this time. Yeah, we did the the red, but we didn't do the blue and the black. So in in the assembly line, they're actually checking this crap, you know, and. Which means they know that it is a weakness point. Yes, so it's like they know, and they haven't updated the shutter. They use the same shutter from the A7 II all the way to the A7 IV and upgrade the motor drive. And to me, if they were to engineer a little teeny tiny hole right there and just put a screw in it. So this is, oh, just to clarify, I didn't clarify, this is an A7 III motor okay. drive. But it's also common, are you, but it's the same part used same throughout. Same part used throughout. Yeah, anywhere from the... What, A7 III, A7 R3? No, well, the R's have a different one because they have the spring up here, remember? Okay. They got a little spring up here. All right, so we're gonna carefully see if we can pull this apart. We can pull apart at the top here. Now, this one's black. What color are the other ones? Gray. Gray. So again, I'm thinking this material may be a little bit different. Ooh, that spring. That's going to yeah. be crazy. Maybe you can keep that one in there and just remove, because that doesn't go... Because I, I assumed that went all the way through, but it... Let's see. Oh, wow. I didn't see... Screw see? and screw, screw are in. You might be able to keep that in to keep the assembly together. Man, and I, I personally never really went deep into these because I don't have time to. I'm trying to make some money, so I'll just change the shutter and keep going, you know? And I've been known to tear something apart just to see how it works. So this is how we discovered it. This is interesting. So we're going to pull this apart. I always uh, tell Handsome that he repairs. I more or less tinker. And sometimes I'll fix it until it's broke. <laughs> so I had to have noticed a different screw. Uh, that one's got a coarse thread. Right. That one's a fine thread. So the coarse thread's gonna go in here into plastic, where this is gonna go, this has gotta have something, um, maybe a little finer thread so it doesn't cut as much. And that's the part that's gonna hold that spring, which is gonna keep that together. And then we're gonna slowly rotate, because we don't wanna rip these flex cables, because these flex cables right there, I tell you, are as delicate as uh, tissue paper. 
Yeah. And if that flex rips, you got a whole you need a whole new part. Looks like the same sprocket. If we compare, okay, that part looks the same. Yeah, it does. But underneath it is what? going to be the key. This is what one is supposed to look like. And we do see a little bit of lubrication under there. Yeah, that. so that's what that looks like. When it's not broken off. Right. So this is the part of, this is the point of failure right there. Is that little, that little shaft breaks right off. And it not only shears, that's it shears at the top. That's a diff this is uh, the tip of that, or maybe yeah. that broke off. Well, I'm thinking they melt this is just to set it in place. Yeah. Maybe they're not going to melt it anymore. Because this little piece right here, that little teeny tiny dot, y'all, that's the piece of melted plastic that normally goes through that hole. And oh, now, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, to hold it. And it looks like on the new ones, it's no longer melted because we have a nice defined ridge. But I can see that they've made some changes. Mainly it looks like material. Now this part right here looks a little bit different. That looks like a sleeved. That is looks that like it's sleeved. Uh, let's see. That is, that may be actually something a little bit different. Nope. That's the same, yeah. So they actually have a little sleeve in there. So why don't they have that? One of that right, right there. there. Then they oh wouldn't have the problem. Gosh. Oh my I wonder, hey, I wonder something. I wonder if they're the same size. Now, which one was which? This was the new one. This was the old one, obviously. It's got all yeah. that stuff on there. I wonder if this tries something. We have some Sony Fitment here. If that could be... Eh, maybe with some John Jacobs engineering and a cigarette lighter, I can get that work. <laughs> but I think if they were re-engineering that part and basically put that little metal support right there, put a screw in the back of it, your shutter would never fail. So be it planned obsolescence or something else. Too expensive to do, whatever it may be. Right. Do it. Do a nickel a million times. If it's a nickel more, a million nickels is a lot of nickels. <laughs> so that looks to be. Hopefully, this housing's been updated. Um, have you put these new shutter or these new shutter motors into any of the new camera or any yeah, of the new cameras? All of these I, uh, I did. So this we, was last week, and there's even more on the other desk. But it was just a crazy. Shutter week. I did like seven shutters last or this today's Friday. I don't know when this will air, but from last Friday to this Friday, I did seven shutter replacements. Whether it's the motor drive and the shutter or either or it's still That's still a that it's that, a lot. That's a lot. So he likes it, it keeps him in business. Yeah, for sure. And that's they're, it. They're, they're nice and quick too. You can knock them out. But again, having the right having the right part, it does snap right back in place. And we can see that little bit of plastic isn't melted. It's just sitting in there. So maybe with it being a solid piece like that and with it not melted, that just that little lip right there will have enough force to keep it in line. But we're just going to pop the screws back into this little jewel and go from there. Oh, that's not the right screw. This is going to be it there. Because this is the one that went into the hard plastic. Yep. Just like so. I'll take this one. This is the one that has a little finer threads. I can see why it's got finer threads because it's got to go on that metal insert. So that metal shaft is threaded. Oh, that's right. But they need, they need, they need to do something about that. And what I will do, or we will do before we put this in service, I'm going to heat that up just a little bit, touch it just to melt that glue back onto that screw. So at least it's coming out factory fresh. Yeah. And then the last thing we'll do is just put this little mechanism back together. And this part is ready to go. John Jacob certified. Certified, baby. There you go. We'll put that back in there. Make sure it's lined up. It does go in from the front here. We'll slide that back in there. 
get it good and tight. That's a German phrase, good and tight. Shout out to Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and car guys on NPR. So now we got the mechanism moving again. One little test I do too. So I'll take a pair of the tweezers here. Oh, not those tweezers. Luckily, you can get more tweezers at the Handsome Tools website. So the sprockets are turning. It's moving. Let's uh, let's give it some power real quick. Before yeah, we... we're gonna test this. <laughs> so we probably need to put this uh, maybe about five volts. So we're gonna connect our positive and negative leads. Oh, we gotta flip it. Remember? Yeah. Well, then we gotta flip this part over. Teamwork. Let me hold it. Uh, I got it right there and right there, and we'll see if we can set this up. Oh, let's make it, let's make make our leads a little bit longer. Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're gonna flip this around where y'all can see it. So what this thing actually does is the motor moves. So we're gonna hold that one to the positive and this one to the negative, and, or vice versa. Switch hands, positive and negative, and what we should see. Woo! There we go. That's what it does. Now normally it would not be taking pictures that quick, although this camera is capable of 10 frames a second. So we know that's at least 10 frames a second if we crank it up. Right. Part reassembled. Um, again, after looking at it, just as a recap, hopefully this housing right here is repaired or reinforced, re-engineered, re, re Sprocket sitting nice and flush where it's supposed to, riding on that little ridge, not buried against this piece of plastic. Again, the broken ones, if you look at them, they may be sitting in the right position, but the gear will be in there sideways. It's crooked. That means that this piece right here is broken. Good little experiment, seeing what breaks. Mother shutter. Exactly, it is a mother shutter. Yeah, it is. It's an epidemic. Yep. Yeah, We're here to, to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Especially when it requires what would you say, 75% teardown of the camera body to even get to this thing? Yeah, that is true. It's all the way to the main frame. That's a lot of flex cables, y'all. Yeah, it is. And if you do that and you do it wrong... Um, You're screwed. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> but yeah. it's something if you do attempt it yourself and you mess it up, you call this guy right here. He can get it figured out. He can put these things together in his sleep. Just don't lose any pieces. Try not to rip these flex cables. And just to show you how easy it is on a flex cable, we're gonna take this bad one. Watch this. That's all it takes. That little rip and those little leads in there crack off and it now that's a dead part. So that's how easy it is. If you're gonna take it apart yourself and try it and you mess it up, watch out for that. Flex cables, that is very true. I appreciate coming on. Yeah, man. This won't be the last time. And y'all know the drill. Until next time, don't break nothing. Peace. Peace. <laughs>